Hi folks, hope you are all doing great today and on this video today we, uh, we, we will see how we can use Google Data Proc to ingest some data being from BigQuery or from a CSV file in your Google Cloud Storage and then process it with Data Proc and uh, save it as a new report in a Delta table format. Okay, uh, so generally, uh, data proc, which the the tool uh, we're going to use to to ingest the data and to process it, uh, it's a fully managed uh, Google uh, cloud provide. Uh, it's a fully managed service provided by Google, and it allows you to create a cluster of machines and and to to run a part Spark on it. Then you can uh, execute your jobs. Uh, with, with PySpark or Scala or other supported languages. And the, the idea is to use it to process uh, huge amounts of data, you know, that you need to distribute the main computing resource to, to do the job you want to do. That's not the case in our demo today, but uh, we, can, we can show here the, the main idea. And then we will save our final report on a Delta table format. And Delta Table is an open source project uh, that aims to, to create uh, lake house architectures on top of da data lakes. Uh, so you can keep all your reports uh, stored in parquet formats in uh, cheap uh, level storage like Google Cloud Storage or Amazon S3. And well, Delta Table managed to, to, to guarantee that to have S level transactions and then you can update, uh, you can ingest more data, generate new words of your reports um, and keep it, keep it updated and also check and track uh, previous versions of your report. So let's jump to our code and see how we're gonna do that. Uh, well, so here we have our, our main code. Uh, this is the, the PySpark code which we will execute on, on Dataproc and basically it reads uh, a data set from Google BigQuery, a public uh, data set provided by Google and transform it, generate a report uh, that consolidates uh, data by vendors and uh, save it as a Delta table. So before we start with the code, let's go to this page here on BigQuery and we can take a look at our data set. It's a famous, very famous public data about New York uh, yellow text strips. So it's the data from 2015. And here we, we can see that the, it basically have uh, all the, each row is a trip uh, from, a, from a taxi in New York and has the pickup date time, drop off date time, number of passengers, distance, uh, coordinates, and as well as final, final uh, data about the fares uh, of the ride. And what the report we want to generate is to have this total sum uh, grouped by vendor's ID, okay? So here we are for our code. First of all, we need to import some libraries to use Spark, uh, to use PySpark. Then we generate a conf, a Spark conf that will have all the, our configurations we need. And for that, then we can start to set some uh, to set some packages and extensions, mainly for the Delta tables. So here are the the configurations which we must. Uh, set on our Spark session to work with Delta tables. And then we, with all this conf here, these configurations are already set, we can create our Spark session, which we are calling here of BQ test from BigQuery. Then we can start to use, it, to use this Spark session to read our data from BigQuery. So basically we use the command to read, the format is going to be BigQuery, and uh, then we set the the path to the to the table we want to read, and it's the same one which we got to see here on the on the on the BigQuery console, um, and then we we send it to load. Uh, actually, we are uh, telling PySpark to load it, but it's not going to load all the all the data because 
um, PySpark works with laser evaluation, so it will only only it only process the, the the actions when I have a final or actually actual actual action um, later. So here on the next step, I'm gonna I'm gonna say to 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 PySpark to filter my data. So I wanna uh, gather only the pickup, only the rides which the pickup daytime is is in January from 2015 or, or in other words it's bigger or equal to 1st January 2015 and smaller than 1st February 2015. And then with this data I can uh, group by vendor ID and aggregate the total amount uh, and give it the name of the column as total. Uh, so I get I'm generating a report of the total amount by group by vendor ID on on the month of January of 15. And finally, uh, we are going to save it. We are going to use the command write to save it in the format of Delta in our Google in a, in a Google Cloud Storage uh, folder. So. Uh, and later on, we're just using a final comment here just so we can see the final format of our report. So we're just using a show here. Uh, well, uh, this, so I basically now we need to upload this file to our Google Cloud Storage. Uh, so here I already, have, I already have my Google Cloud Storage uh, with two buckets, one for the data prop files and the other one for uh, saving. Uh, the delta tables. And you can see here that I'm using this bucket to save my my final report and I'm telling you to create a folder with the taxi driver report name inside it. And here on the top of files, I have this file which we were creating, extract bq save the table.py and also uh, some initialization actions which we, we will use to start our data proc um, cluster. And this, this code is also here. Uh, we'll show you in a minute. So with this code we can go to data proc and start creating our cluster. Mainly here we are in the starting page for data proc in the Google Cloud Console. We can click on create cluster and then uh, we'll pretty much use the default configurations here. So we'll keep the name, we'll keep the uh, zones, everything as default and then we can come to configure nodes. I will select the smaller nodes because I'm using the free tier from GCP, so it limits the amount of PCQ which, which I can create each time. Uh, I reduce the disk size to 30 GB, which is the minimum, and also reduce here the size of the workers to two CPUs. The same with the disk size. And then here on the on the tab customize cluster, I must uh, tell the initialization actions which my cluster must perform in, in its machines when it starts. So I will I will uh, give the path to this to this file. And mainly what I'm tell, I'm telling you to do is to install the Delta Spark library for Python, and also to download the Delta Core jar, which will be used in Spark to to work with Delta tables and to, to store it on, the, on this file path here on the, on the machines, on the nodes. So here I'm going to add the initialization actions, browse, and I will select the file which is in my Google Cloud Storage. So here it is, data prop files, click install. And, and you can save it with whatever name you want. And finally, uh, we can set a, here a scheduled deletion configuration in order to delete the cluster if you have is if you keep 10 minutes without processing your job it's very important to do for a matter of costs then we can create our cluster 
Well, now that our cluster is create, uh, we can start to submit one of the jobs, okay? So I can, I can come here in job and then click on submit job. And well, this is the cluster which is being created right now. Select cluster. We wanna submit the PySpark job because we created all our all our code in PySpark. And here it asks for the main uh, for the path for my main Python file, which is this one. So if I click here, if I click to see the details of the file, I can see here it's just gsu 2 uri gsu 2 uri which is the one we must use here in Betaproc. And also, very important, that's one of the main things, and maybe that's the main reason why I'm doing this video, because the first time I, I tried to use Delta tables with Betaproc, it took me a long time to discover that, but I must specify here the path for the jar file from the Delta tables. So, here, on our bash on the initialization actions, uh, we see we are downloading this uh, this file on this path here, so it's mainly we add, we need to insert on that field. So here, and we always might, must use a file on prefix. So this is what we need to put here. And also, since we are reading data from BigQuery, we need to to specify here the, the connector for BigQuery. So if you go to Google, you can use uh, PySpark data prop BigQuery. And here, here it is. It already shows us the, the BigQuery connector for PySpark page. And here is the, the path to this jar, which is public. So you can just paste here. Uh, so we set all the, the the main Python file, the jar file, and then I think we are good to go. So we can submit the job. And then the job will start. It will actually on the first time since the cluster is are, is also creating. It will take its time to start, and then it will take some time to run and return our final report. So here we are. Uh, our our job executed successfully, as you can see, and our final report has its format, so uh, it calculates the total amount in the month, in the January 2015 for vendor IDs for one and two, and uh, you can, it's important that we see, uh, we remember these numbers here, it gave a result of 8.95 to vendor ID one, and 1 1.03 to vendor ID two, and now for next steps, uh, we're going to see how we can, and, and that's the main use for the auto tables and how we can see the really real value from it. Uh, we're going to see how we can, for example, receive, suppose you, it's a, it's a report that you must update every day or that you must update uh, every month and you receive new data and how, uh, how, to, how we're going to get to reprocess the report uh, with Dataproc. Uh, uh, adding this new data and generate a new version of the report which will have a new month or a new day of data and how uh, Delta tables are going to handle with that. So uh, let's go back to our code here. We have a new file which is the which we uh, we gave a name here of update and it's mainly the same code but here we change our we change our uh, our filter to get not only data from January but also from January and February. So we are uh, the second condition we have we are changing to uh, lower than March first, and then we are making the same aggregation aggregation calculating the same report, but uh, instead of just saving it and overriding the report, we are gonna uh, we are gonna uh, read. The old, the, the already saved report, which we are calling it old report here uh, from our Google Cloud Storage, and we are reading the format of Delta tables. And then we we will execute uh, operation of merge and update. Uh, and so it's pretty much like an absurd in in SQL, in MySQL. 
and then we will call all the report uh, we give it an alias of old and we will uh, execute the merge with the new text driver reporter which we calculated here uh, and we'll give it uh, we'll name it as new and then we we use the vendor id field to compare both of the reports and when there is a match uh, on a vendor id uh, or when the, when the vendor id exists on both reports um, the field will be updated with the data from from the new report and when it's a new id which didn't exist before it will be inserted okay and then we will execute this action the final and so here we are gonna well we are gonna uh, paste our uh, just just show our final report and to see the new the new data okay so here now uh, this this file is already on our google cloud storage and we can execute the same uh, process we did before to create a job but since we have a red done here and it's pretty it's almost the same configurations you can just use this button here which is called clone and we'll select the cluster which we want to work and here we just change the name of the file to update dq save and then we can submit our job and now it's take it will take its time to to process again so here our job already executed one more time and we can see the final result here now is the data from uh, January and February it's 1.8 to vendor ID 1 2.02 to vendor ID 2 and well this is the new version updated from the report so that's the main idea of the delta tables you can uh, keep generating your reports with new data and update them and guarantee the uh, the, the versions of the report so uh, it's not the, the object of this this video but um, for the reasons you can check on other functionalities from the other tables you can uh, check on previous versions from from the reports and other interesting things uh, also then with this report saved as google in a, in a storage like google cloud or s3 you can query them in a sql engine like presto or like uh, Amazon Athena with Google Catalog, uh, so it's the, the 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 main advantage to work with Delta tables that you you get to create a lake house, uh, taking advantage of the low costs of the uh, of the the storage uh, the file storage uh, provided by the cloud providers. Uh, so hope you enjoyed the, the video, hope you get to use it uh, in your daily job and that you learn something new. Thank you. Thanks for watching.